guys, Glenn here. Welcome to another episode of Sound of Features. And uh, today we're joined by, by an old friend uh, who decided to drop by and uh, give us a surprise. Uh, of course, I'm talking about mi amigo, <laughs> Mr. Roberto Alvarez. <laughs> How's it going? I mean, uh, before we proceed to what have you been up to, um, it's been a year since we yep, last uh, had that first interview. Yeah, yeah. More than a year, I think. More than a year. I remember it was before the performance of Steve Wright. Yeah. I, I was preparing with a few singers and uh, some drum players. Yeah. So, well, this year has been full of activities, many concerts, and there are many projects coming soon. And I would like to talk to you about that. All right, sure. Oh, but before we go there, um, I remember last time we, we, we had a discussion, you mentioned that I, I ask you about the what, your thoughts on the Singapore's uh, the, the music scene here in Singapore, and uh, at that time you thought it would be unfair to compare mm. the uh, local scene to other that of other parts of the world. Do you still feel that way? Yeah, it is a, a still a bit unfair because the tradition that you have in Europe or in other places is very different than the tradition in classical music that you have here. Yeah, still a. We are working a little bit on bringing the standard a bit higher mm -hmm. and there are some examples, for example in flute, uh, three of my students, they are studying now overseas, wow. some of them in Hanover in Germany, some of them in England, some in France, so well the scene is getting higher. Of course there are, there are many local musicians that they are bringing the, the classical music in a very high level right now. I mean, Chan Yung Han, members of SSO, Katrina Tan, harpist, we play together a lot. She's not Singaporean, but, but uh, she's Singaporean on adoption, like I, like I am. Uh, so, well, slowly we are developing uh, a better understanding. And of course, SSO, the orchestra I play with, that plays a fundamental uh, part in developing this. Having mentioned that, um, do you think classical music now is well represented here in Singapore? Well, the SSO is the biggest, the biggest thing. We just went to the proms in London a couple of weeks ago, which is probably the biggest festival in the world. And it was a success. It was like 6,000 people uh, listened to us live on radio. Uh, there will be on TV, I think, at some point. Uh, it is on stream in radio on <coughs> sorry on the internet <coughs> and it was a fantastic program um, and it is the first time that that any Singaporean group goes that far it also there is the tank quartet there are many examples and there is a lot of activity and uh, classical music is is well represented in Singapore only in the next few years hopefully there will be more examples of that um, what do you think uh, would be uh the best way to uh, for kids here, local kids, and uh, of course uh, young people who are residing in here in Singapore to be interested more in classical music. Mm -hmm. First thing is the boundaries in between classical and not classical. That's something I always try to fight against. Against, um, I like all kind of, of styles. Of course, classical is my speciality. I, I listen to to that the most. I think we were talking last time about. Celtic music that I listen to a lot, funky, uh, rock, all kind of things. <clears throat> but the main thing for the kids, I would say, is to listen to things, to be exposed to many different styles, not only to pop, not only to MTV, which is very good. It's good that they have some, some uh, fun listening listen to that, but also other stuff. I don't know if in the schools they are doing that, they are, they are exposing uh, the kids to, to classical music, they are bringing, bringing them to chamber concerts or orchestra concerts, but they should do something like that. Uh, and it is, it is something that we have to change, to, to think that classical music is very uh, upright, is very serious, and you cannot have fun with that. It's truly fun, it's a fantastic world. And it can, it can get pretty wild, actually. 
I think he's telling the truth because tonight he's wearing a Led Zeppelin t-shirt. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Which is a classical rock group. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, I have to mention the first interview we did was, that was before the Steve Wright drumming, mm -hmm. which you mentioned was very successful. But since then, what have you been doing? Well, as usual, I play with the orchestra, one concert a week minimum. So that keeps me warm all the time. Uh, um, and then I've been playing, as I said, with Katrina Tan, Chan Jung Han. We have been, we have been doing uh, WC trio for flute, viola, and harp. Many projects with with chamber music. Uh, I've been doing also Australia Flute Festival. I've been playing overseas, playing also here in Singapore. Um, and then next week, which is the next big project that I will have, it is a project called On the Flip Side. It's a concert featuring four Singaporean premieres. Well, better say four uh, premieres in Singapore. Oh. This time it's not Singapore music. I normally make many premieres from Singaporean composers. I try to, to do. This time I take two pieces from Spain and I went to the other side of the world. I went to New Zealand, take two pieces from there too. When I was a kid, I was always thinking, hey, if I dig a hole, down to earth, where would I go from my hometown? Uh -huh. And then I found out, oh, New Zealand. Is it true? It is true. <laughs> it is true. I was wondering what's going on there. How, yeah. how do they people walk? Do they walk <laughs> like the other, the other way? Or how is the music there? So this is a very good chance to discover if the music is very similar, if the music is very different, or what, what are the parallelism or the differences in, in, into the music in contemporary music. In, in the music made basically today, like in the last, let's say, the last 20 years. Aside from that, well, <coughs> so what can people expect from the from you guys during the concert? Mm. This is a very high energy concert. It's four pieces where Shane Theo, the pianist, and I, we don't stop playing. It's a tour de force, playing constantly, very difficult, very entertaining. It's like we, we don't have even one second rest, and the 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 group is very, very tight together. It's uh, really fun to listen. This music is, is going to be fantastic. Quick question. Is being a musician still a... Uh, you mentioned this last interview, but I want to check on you again. Is, is, is being a music musician still a uh, career worth pursuing today? Uh, well, I don't remember exactly what I said before, <laughs> but I guess it's something similar to what I still think, yeah. uh, which is, a, is it worthy? How? Uh, in terms of money? Yes. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, but that's not all. I, I think if you like music, if you really love music, it is the way to go. If you don't love it, better you can do things as an amateur, you can have fun, but if you want it to be a career, you, have, you really have to love it. <clears throat> because you will be playing many hours a day. <coughs> The, the satisfaction that you will have, well, I mean, if you are in an orchestra or you have a successful career, career you will have some money, okay. Uh, <clears throat> but the main thing, something that you don't buy with money is, for example, to go to the proms, to see all that people, to go to a children's concert and see the, the kids smiling. Uh -huh. that, that's absolutely a part of any salary or any budget. And that's something that the music gives to you. So I think musicians, <clears throat> We are very lucky because we do what we love. So in those terms, uh, for me, it's very difficult to say that I got a job. I got many jobs. I mean, I teach in schools, I, I work in the orchestra. But, well, I'm lucky enough to say when I take the flute, I play. That's a very appropriate work. The flute, play a few notes or play a few pieces. It's really fun. It can be very hard, it can be very tough. Sometimes, if you have to practice at 8 a.m., maybe you don't feel like. Uh, <laughs> so the difference is if you are an amateur and you say, well, maybe today I keep sleeping. But if you are a professional, no, you have to get up and play. <laughs> On that note, any advice to our young musicians today? And of course, invite them to your upcoming concert at the Esplanade. All right. Please go grab your tickets for going to On the Flip Side. <coughs> An antipodal concert, it's very uh, antipodal as the opposite countries. Uh, <clears throat> as an advice, well, advice for, for 
uh, as a comment for if you like music, listen to all kind of styles, and if you like it, go ahead. But be exposed to music, be exposed to events, non-stop, all kind of music, that's the best advice. I would say the same thing to a classical uh, musician, go listen to, to some jazz, why not? Go listen to some Celtic music, why not? But as a jazz player, I would tell well, why don't you come and listen to an orchestra, why don't you come and listen to some chamber concert? Well, there you have it. Uh, thanks again for dropping by, and uh, please watch his, uh, Mr. Roberto's upcoming concert at the Esplanade, and uh, hope to see you again. And hope my voice will be recorded. <laughs> okay, thank you. Gracias. Okay. Gracias. <laughs>